What's up everybody, it's Jeremiah here, and today I'm going to be giving you guys a brand new Jerry Place, because one, it's been a while, and two, I feel as though this game does deserve some love on the channel, seeing as I've never really shown it off to its greatest potential, so I want to do that as best I can. So, the twist with this, or spin, I guess, with this series is that uh, while I play through the game, I'm actually going to start from the beginning, but with everything unlocked. So, therefore, we won't have to go through any trial and error trying to unlock every single ability and getting infinite spin time, or uh, infinite spin and slide duration, because I have everything. And while I was in my yay at one point in my life, I uh, wanted to just kick back, relax, and just play this game. So, I got everything. So, we're going to start from episode one. Um, I'm going to show you guys the stats just for some proof. And yes, if you're wondering if I'm playing this on emulator, I is, I, I is, oh my goodness. I am playing this on emulator. We have 1 million plus mojo. We have all 27 upgrades, infinite spin time, and our slide duration is 15 seconds, which I believe is the max. But I'm not going for 100% completion. Y'all should already know that I don't do that type of stuff by now. But without further ado, I will let you guys listen in on the cutscenes. Oh, and speaking of the cutscenes, since I do have everything unlocked, that doesn't mean that you guys won't you know get any context of the story because you will even while i have everything unlocked so it'll still be fun and yeah so let's let's start episode one a new hop <laughs> Long last, the world will have a way to recycle butter. Hey, stop it. hey that was a good one. <laughs> okay, okay, hand me the trans pooper. <laughs> the purple thingy. Hey, genius. I can't actually hear you. I'm really far away, and I'm flying like a hovercraft or something. I will deal with them. I have been fighting evil for many centuries. What? You don't even got a body. I'm just gonna stay here a while. Alright, so as you guys just saw that introduction, you guys get the gist of what's going on. Okay, let's turn this dude off for a second. We're gonna turn that dialogue off. Yes, you can do that in this game in case y'all don't know. Uh, but yeah, so as you guys know, now Coco and Akuaku, well, Akuaku was almost kidnapped. Um... But Coco was, and it's gonna serve as a pretty uh, trivial or vital point in the plot. But yo, let's just appreciate like how fucking gorgeous this game looks before we even make any progression, because this game looks beautiful. It's probably the most beautiful looking Crash game right next to Modern Remuting. Um, But yeah, right off the bat, I have everything, infinite, not infinite slide duration time, 15 second slide duration time, as well as an infinite spin time. So I can spend as long as I want. I can play through the whole game, just spinning through the levels. And I have 1 million plus mojo. I got the gyro jackhammer. The triple dragon. And this. I forgot what it was called. I know before the third headbutt thing, there's uh it's called uh like the I think that is the triple dragon actually. I think the double wag uh the double the double whammy is the punch punch. No 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 no. Okay, never mind. Yeah, it's just the first, this, and that. That's the double whammy. That's the double whammy. Triple dragon is when the head part comes in. But yo, what I didn't realize when I first played this game years ago was that this was Coco's house. 
Like, I never focused on this detail when I initially uh, played through this shit. I didn't notice. We actually hit our mailbox, which is pretty cool. But yeah, we won't really be needing any mojo, but it does feel satisfying collecting them. So, I'm going to just throw that out there. So, even though I don't need them, uh, we can collect them still. But yeah, I'm going to be playing this game as best I can as we get through. I say that as I fall, but I mean, kind of, you know, because we got back up, but whatever. So let's just get this dude out of our face. Spin through here. Oh, and I just want to clarify that, like, this is probably one of the most linear Crash Bandicoot games in the entire series as well. Like, a lot of people try to say that this game stems away what, what made Crash Bandicoot special. But the thing is, with this game, it's still a platformer at heart. It just has beat-em-up elements in between, I feel. So, it's really not that different from any other Crash game. It's just unique. It was creative. And as you guys saw in the introduction of the game with the cutscene, you guys can clearly see that Crash was, you know, born to be a slave, but he was a rebel. He was a rebel against Cortex, which is why they have their scufflings. You know, and then afterwards they made every other mutated, uh, they mutated every other animal to work for Cortex, which is what Crash wanted to, I mean, not Crash, which is what Cortex wanted to do with Crash Bandicoot since the beginning of the first game. You know, he escaped. And he still escaped, even in this one, in the introduction. They, le they legitimately reference Crash Bandicoot 1 in here, in this game, but no one seems to look at, look at that. I think like oh that's just a nod to the first Crash Bandicoot, and they sort of they not not even sort of sort of is an understatement. They definitely expanded upon that with this game, which is why I love it so much. So that's why I genuinely don't understand why people are, you know, so I guess spiteful of this title. And Mind of Immune just legitimately like continues off of it. And also, this is actually one of my favorite design, Crash Bandicoot. Uh, this is one of my favorite designs for Crash. I love it, personally. You don't have to, and that's cool, but that's just how I feel. And no, this isn't going to mean any... any this is... Uh, blah, 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 freak. <laughs> this isn't um, going to be any type of speed run playthrough it, uh, either. I'm just playing the game how I want. So we can have an overall smooth experience. Now, understand that smooth... It's not really synonymous with, uh, oh shit, hold on. It's not synonymous with easy. There will be moments where I get, where I get cucked and annoyed. So just keep that in mind. There's a spy bot. Yeet. All right. So that's one down. Uh, right now I don't have the dialogue on. So I'm going to turn it back on as soon as we get to this plot, uh, platform over here. All right. All right. All right, they're out of the way. Again, I don't really have to beat them since I have all of my upgrades. However, I can if I choose to, just cause. But nah, I definitely admire the platforming in this game. I love it a lot. And just so you know, you don't get Aku Aku in the beginning. You don't like, you're not able to block in the beginning or anything like that. Because, uh, well, Aku Aku's in a cage. Right up there, actually, as I say that. And we gotta save him, pretty much. Alright, if y'all heard that noise, that was just a stupid-ass firework because my neighborhood sucks and even though the 4th of July is over and no one really cares about America being, you know, you know, aging, they're just blowing shit up just because, just so you know. Alright, I think we're done. Combo King, baby. Thank you, Crash. My powers were useless against them. Dark magic is behind these creatures. Strange things are afoot. Uh -huh. Yes, I know I don't have feet. Let's just go already. <laughs> Crash, 
hold the R1 button to use me to lock in the attack. <laughs> That's my face though, so go easy on me. Okay, so I had to go on BRB for a split second, so that's why that slight little edit was there. But yeah, we got Aku. This is pretty much where you get Aku Aku. Uh, you save him, and then you're able to block and shit. But Dan has already had him. You know, it's pretty obsolete. But it's still uh, essential for the plot. Damn, look at this linear ass path right here. It's almost as if it's just like the first Crash game. And here's our first Titan. Now, at first, I was initially... Initially, I was confused as to why, like, he did that. Because, you know, they're essentially working together, you know, to destroy Crash. But I figured since that thing is controlled by dark magic, um, he probably thought that was Crash Bandicoot, so he tried to kill it, even though he wasn't there. So it's basically, it was basically um, some type of quick reaction, I suppose. Because you never know who's there, and you never know who isn't. Oh, and another thing I want to address too. So when it comes to Mario Odyssey in this game, I see people draw comparisons. Now, while they are similar, I do think that Crash Bandicoot does the whole possessing thing. I ain't gonna say better, but I'll just say in the way that it's appropriate to fit Crash Bandicoot. Because if you look at the Titan here, you'll see like, you see it glowing in its arms. Those are Crash's tattoos going on the, um, the Titan. Because when he jacks the Titan, or takes control of him with Aku Aku, they form a bond. So, he's essentially like his Pokemon. This Titan is, a, is, is Crash's Pokemon. I forgot what this one was called. I want to say it has, a, I, has a, I want to say that it has a spike in the name. Because, you know, it's special. is like bringing spikes from underground. Yeah, there's a bunch of freaking Titans in this game that we're going to that we're gonna see uh, as we move forward shit like that and again we don't have to kill every enemy since i already beat the game and i have every every ability unlocked and i have a million plus mojo here but yeah it's still fun in my opinion so yeah just it's still a platform at heart if you haven't played these it just has beat em up elements in between it spices things up i'm not gonna say it makes it better because you don't have to think it's better but it definitely makes things more interesting and interesting doesn't always need to be bad or good. Interesting just means it's something from the norm, I suppose. When you look at it from this context. Also, I just realized I fucked up. Because we need the spike to destroy that tree up ahead. So let's go do that real quick. And we're done. We can't really take this guy with us anywhere anyway. So might as well just slide on through. Oh, man, the sliding sound is still playing. What the heck? <laughs> Alright, that sliding noise needs to go away already. There we go. Alright, uh, we are 15 minutes into this episode. I'm not going to make this any longer. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed episode 1 of Crash of the Titans. Personally, I thought it was meh. You could think it was meh, too. But I tried my best to explain and elaborate on things uh, when it came to the game and stuff. So, yeah. Crash of the Titans is a creative Crash Bandicoot game. It does stay loyal to what made Crash Bandicoot special. It just makes things a bit different, more interesting. And Mario Odyssey is not a Crash of the Titans clone. Mario Odyssey just expands a lot more on what Mario Odyssey wanted to do. So, yeah. Just wanted to get that out the way. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode. We'll be taking on uh, episode two. And the rest is history. So, yeah. I'll see you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.